Okay, the next topic is chapter six, managing quality. Um, so same as other chapters, I told you there's a global company profile that you can read it. And there is a video that you can watch on Arnold Palmer Hospital. So it explains about um, how they manage um, the whole system, how they make sure that quality is controlled, a number of um, outpatient inpatients uh, are in, this, in, a, in a safe range. Um, so there is no long line of uh, people waiting to be served. We will talk about quality and strategy, define quality, total quality management or TQM. So during the slides, when we say TQM, we are referring to total quality management. Tools of TQM and uh, role of inspection TQM in services. Learning objective, uh, you will learn, you will learn to define quality and TQM, describe uh, ISO international quality standards. We will talk about the Six Sigma uh, benchmarking in TQM and we will talk about quality robust products and Taguchi concept use and we will talk about using the seven tools of TQM. Managing quality supports differentiation low cost and response strategies quality helps firms increase sales and reduce costs uh, building a quality organization is a demanding task okay so two ways quality improve improves profitability so um, if you improve quality one way is you will gain more sales how do you gain more sales by improving response? How do you gain improved response? Because you have a high quality and uh, people use word of mouth. They share their good experience with your product and slowly, slowly um, your customers grow, number of your customers grow. So you will have um, more response. Flexible pricing and improved reputation. These are things that uh, you can gain by having higher quality. You also, on the other side, you can have less cost. So not only improving quality increases your output, which is your sales, it also reduces your cost. How does it reduce your cost? Of course, it increases your productivity. It lower rework and um, scrap cost, rework for defects right if there is a defect that production is not ready for sale it has to go back um, repaired or it has to destroy it and uh, create it again so you don't want that happen if the first time you get get the product right by having a higher quality of um, production then you don't have to redo it that's that's reduces cost and uh, lower warranty cost Let's say you sell your item, your product, and after a few days, after a few months, um, during the time of warranty, that stops working. There's a failure there. So your customer gets back upset. First of all, they're upset. So you, you're losing a customer, happiness of a customer, and you have to get your product back, uh, give them a new one, or repair it and uh, give them the repair. So that actually is, a, is an additional cost on your business. So you don't want these things happen. So all of these can be reduced by improving the quality and making sure the first time you are making the production, you get it right. And as a result, you have more input, more sales, more revenue, and less cost. Higher revenue, lower cost means higher profit. So that's how you can increase profit by improving quality. So the flow of activities um, in, in, in general, this is in general, it's not considering all types of organizations, but in general, in, in organizations, you have 
organizational practices, quality principles, making sure that quality is defined and is monitored, employee fulfillment, making sure that employees are being trained, being informed of um, how to accomplish that quality and follow the organizational practices, and making sure that your customers, your clients are happy, right? They're, they're satisfied with your product. So one more time, organizational practices like leadership, mission statement, effective operating procedures, staff support and training, um, these yield to what is important and what is to be accomplished. So these have to be defined very well for your staff, for your managers, and for yourself. You need to know what exactly you want and you need to inform your employees and your managers of what exactly you want. Otherwise, they, they will be confused and they won't be productive. <coughs> Quality principles uh, has to be customer focus, making sure that your product is not there to satisfy you as a person, it's there to satisfy your customers. You have to watch and see what your customer needs. Uh, continuous improvement, making sure that if today you have a good, good amount of sales, you have happy customers. That does not mean tomorrow you also will have good customers, happy customers, and good product. So every day, every time, you need to keep think about how you can improve your product. Other than internal matters, you have competitors outside that they keep thinking about making things better. And if one day you are still there and they have improved their product, they are the ones who will get your customers. Okay. So let's finalize this. Uh, organizational practices. We learned that... Um, it's important the leadership uh, clearly mentions the mission statement um, operating procedures are effective and accurately written and also they are communicated well with the staff um, to training and support quality principles um, you have to be custom focused you need to make sure our continuous improvement in, is there, benchmarking and comparing to higher level and others in the market or other managers or other staff and making sure always improve um, in quality and uh, in employee fulfillment, empowerment, organizational commitments uh, should increase by having a better environment and uh, making sure employees' attitudes are uh, well prepared and again customer satisfaction is everything um, in any organization because your customers your clients are the ones who at the end make sure that your business is running because customers means sales means revenue revenue means profit if you don't make profit you don't have a business Defining quality, so an operations manager's um, objective is to build a total quality management system that identifies and satisfies customer needs. Um, different views, um, so from the, from the perspective of user-based, they are looking into better performance and more features. So look at yourself when you want to buy uh, a product. You want higher performance. You want to pay less and get more from the product. And you want more features, right? Uh, manufacturing based um, from the perspective of manufacturing. Conformance to standards, making it right the first time. That's what we said before. Uh, you don't want to pay or spend a lot on repairs. Uh, product based, specific and measurable uh, attributes of the products. So from the perspective of the product itself, you want to make sure that it's specific and you have measurable attributes or factors. Why? Because for improvement of the procedure 
um, you need to measure the quality of your product, right? If, if you can't measure the quality of your product, you can't control it. So make sure um, that is right there. Implications of quality, company reputation, perception of new products, employment practices, supplier relationships, and product liability. Uh, if you have a higher quality, of course, you have a lower risk of having returns, of having failures. Uh, and what is the global implications? Improve ability to compete and make sure that you have sales and not the other companies. So these parts, uh, you can read these from the book. Average criteria, applicants are evaluated based on. Um, these are just criteria set out there uh, to evaluate. So you can see that um, this is not unique, of course, company to company and based on their needs uh, can be different. But uh, what is it that the mo is the most important thing here for this company? Leadership. They give 120 points to it. Strategic planning, 85, 85 to customer focus. Measurement analysis, 90. So you can see that most of them are almost the same. 85, 90, but leadership, 120, total of 100, 450 points are given. Um, ISO or ISO 9000 international quality standards. So these are standards that are set uh, for managers and for management to make sure that um, certain qualities are actually have met and uh, they, they keep they keep improving it so if you want to have a certain quality you will follow one of those um, ISOs out there and uh, you can get a certificate from them and they will actually confirm that you are having that certain quality uh, from the perspective of management principles, um, you want to have top management leadership. You want to have, you want to consider customer satisfaction. Continual improvement should be there. Um, involvement of people. Process analysis. Use of data-driven decision making, not just based on I love this or like this. Um, a system approach to management and mutually beneficial supplier relationship is required. costs of quality so prevention costs reducing potential for defects we, we did talk about this earlier that um, that help us to reduce a lot of costs if you get things done correct in the first time appraisal cost evaluating products parts and services that actually reduces a lot that's that's much lower than um, when you let the failures happen and then repair it, or external happens and repair it, right? It's better to have appraisal cost or prevention cost before things go wrong. That's much, um, that's having much lower cost compared to these two internal failure and uh, external failure cost. And we have a plot here that shows and actually compares uh, the appraisal cost, prevention call, internal failure, external failure. So this is for a specific organization, but we can say that uh, for different companies, you will have approximately the same, um, the same um, chart, same plot. So we can see that if you consider appraisal, you will have the lowest cost. Why? Because you keep keep monitoring the quality and you can actually predict if anything is going wrong in the system before things go wrong you can actually uh, stop it prevention uh, putting processes and putting um, management system that actually uh, prevent failure uh, it, it is more costly than appraisal because appraisal is just like more into data collection but prevention is you have to put um, additional human resources and machines to 
prevent um, failure. And of course, I told you that internal failure and external failure are much more costly. Internal failure is when you have actually produced the production or service, uh, but that's actually before giving it out or sending it out or selling it out to customers. And internally, before sending your product out there, you test it. Um, still costly because if you see there's a failure, you still have to repair it or correct it. External is the highest cost because the customer service is involved, returns are involved, and warranty is involved. So you don't want to get there. Um, Kumi, a Japanese character that symbolizes a broader dimension than quality, a deeper process than education, and a more uh, perfect method than persistence. It's more like an attitude uh, given to uh, many Japanese employees, uh, teaching them uh, looking for perfection and making sure that everything is done perfectly. Um, leadership in quality, so these parts can I skip, you can read them from, that's your reading assignment, fix and quality management. So on um, fix and quality management, operations managers must deliver healthy, safe, quality products and services. Poor quality risk injuries, lawsuits, recalls and regulations. So this is another way looking at costs, right? If uh, ethics and quality is not well managed, it can lead to injuries of your employees, lawsuits are involved, recalls are involved, and regulations. Ethical conduct must uh, dictate response to problems, and all stakeholders must be considered. TQM, or Total Quality Management, um, encompasses entire organization from supplier to customer. So everything is involved and we want to make sure that we have a total quality management. Everything is managed. Nothing is gone out of our eyes as a manager. Uh, there is a commitment uh, by management to have continuing company-wide drive toward excellence in all aspects of product and services that are important to the customer. So you can see that although operations management is mainly involved in management of internal activities and operations. However, everywhere we talk about, we have something about the customer that's saying how important customer is for us. That means 14 points of uh, management, um, quality management, uh, create consistency of purpose, lead to promote change. So I'm, sh I'm sure if you have worked, you have seen companies, organizations, bosses that uh, if you bring change, they don't like it. Okay, they, they like things go the way they are going. So that's a problem. Uh, being open to changes. Um, of course, um, th there has to be a good certain amount of training provided to employees to make sure they not everyone feels that a change is um, recommending a change is um, required to be accepted but um, accepting change is, is a good thing if the productivity of your company increases then why not um, build quality into product stop depending on inspection to catch problems uh, build long-term relationship based on performance instead of wearing business on price, continuously improve product quality and services, start training. So training is very important to increase quality, emphasize um, leadership and drive out fear that can bring more stress and more pressure on employees and reduce productivity, break down Barriers between departments, do not put all the pressure on one department, stop haranguing workers, stop bullying, don't let um, the environment 
uh, push your employees out. You spend hours and days and months on an employee, train them, prepare them to work well, and because of the environment and because of um, the relationship and, and uh, society that we have inside the organization, they might leave you. Uh, and you have to spend gain, hire another person, provide them with training, and if they go through, that's a lot of loss. Support, help, and improve. Uh, remove barriers to pride in work. Institute, uh, institute a uh, vigorous program of education and self-improvement. Put everyone in the company to work on the transformation. Okay, good. Seven concepts of Total Quality Management, or TQM. So these are the seven concepts. Continuous Improvement, Six Sigma. Employee Improvement, Benchmarking, Just-in-Time, uh, Taguchi Concept, and Knowledge of TQM Tools. So let's just go over one by one on these cases. So Continuous Improvement, we did talk about Continuous Improvement and its importance. Uh, it is important to make sure that you're improving your processes. Yeah, so... Now, I told you, if you keep, today your business is, is successful and happy, you have good sales, good profit, that does not mean tomorrow it's going to be the same. There are competitors out there that they're going, going to take your customers, they're going to take your revenue, and you will go out of business if you don't keep improving and changing towards a positive and higher product productivity. What is Six Sigma? So on Six Sigma, I can say, um, I hope you remember from uh, basic statistics, or if you had a data analysis course before, that you learned almost 68% of your observations of your cases in a data sample or population, data that you selected, Almost 68% of your data are in the range of average plus and mi minus one time of standard deviation, right? And what else did you learn? You learned two times of standard deviation plus and minus your average includes 90, almost 95% of your observations. And we, if we continue, how about three times? That's 99.7%. What did we call that? We call that empirical rule. Empirical rule in basic statistics and data analysis tell us that if a data set, if, a, if our data set follow normal probability distribution, then we have these um, criteria. We can say what portion of our data are in what range away from the average. So, when you are making a decision for your business, for your customers, for the quality, um, making decision based on a normal dis distribution is perfect. However, if you want to be 95% uh, good, right? If you want to be 95% um, accurate in your decision making of um, managerial decision, what is the range you should select? two times standard deviation. 99.7%, three times standard deviation. Now the six sigma, what is sigma? Sigma is a standard deviation. Sigma represents standard deviation, right? Six sigma means instead of one time standard deviation, two times or three times, use six times standard deviation. Having six times standard deviation can actually uh, instead of 99.7 or 95 percent accuracy in decision making can give you 99.9993 percent accuracy and that's that that means maybe like less than seven uh mistakes in a, in a million production okay so that is what six sigma means just remember that sigma means standard deviation then you're going to remember what six sigma means Employee empowerment, um, the most important thing I can say about employee empowerment is having a good attitude in um, 
our organization and making sure that um, there is enough training provided for our employees to make sure that keep the attitude up, have a positive environment of working and actually safe. Uh, we also did talk about the bench benchmarking. So benchmarking uh, is always having uh, some methods, some ways to measure efficiency, measure productivity, measure quality, and compare those who are at the top of the business, at the top of the quality to others, and we can improve ourselves and get where they are. Also, let's talk about the um, just-in-time or JRT. So just-in-time, I actually created, I uh, believe, in Japan. And you know, in Japan, it's, it's a small country. They don't have much space. And because they don't have much space, they don't have space for inventory, right? So they had to come up with a design. This is actually go back to Toyota. Uh, when they decided to expand their business and have more production, they, they did not have enough space for inventory. As a result, they had to come up with uh, an idea of JIT. And that means, first of all, they receive demand first. And based on actual demand, they will produce. So things don't start from... Um, Considering that they, they say, we want to produce 20,000 cars a month or a year. They actually wait when the demand comes in, they produce for that demand, first of all. Second, they don't have inventory. They don't have much space for inventory. So uh, the supply chain, when uh, the products come to put together at, uh, at the factory, um, as soon as they they are arriving, they go inside the factory and use. So they, they're not going to be stored anywhere. Or if an, any storage are involved, it's very small. It's not a big space of storage. Okay. So just in time, in fact, is a design that reduces inventory amount. And instead of producing and then selling, they actually get the demand, get the request. They know there is a person out there who wants to buy the product. Then they will produce. Taguchi concept uh, is a concept based on management that um, creates a higher level of attitude among employees, bring employees to a level that they feel responsible, total responsible, and they want to provide the high, highest quality. And if they make a mistake, they will feel responsible about it. And the uh, knowledge of TQM tools uh, that we will talk on the other slides. Okay, so, so these are the topics that we already talked about. Continuous improvement, never-ending process of continuous improvement, covers people, equipment, suppliers, material, procedures. Every operation can be improved. Um, PDCA model from Schwartz. So P for plan. Do it. Test the plan. Check it. Is this plan working? And then act. Implement the plan document. And this can actually help you to have a um, continuous improvement. How? So you will, you will have a plan. You will get it done and you will check. Is that working well? If it's not working well, of course, you will change your plan, right? And you can always improve your plan and um, keep, keep improving. Okay, Six Sigma, I told you, it's based on, um, instead of 95% or 68% accuracy or confidence level, we have a confidence level of 99.9997% capability or uh, confidence level, statistically, right? That means in, in reality, we are hoping that among every million uh, products, we only have three products or even less than three products 
with the failure or defects. A program designed to reduce defects, lower cost, save time, improve customer satisfaction, and comprehensive system for achieving and sustaining business success. So this is what Six Sigma is about. I told you 99.7% approximately for three times standard deviation, right? But this time, again, Sigma is standard deviation. So we have six times standard deviation. Decision is made based on 3.4 defects per million. So we're making decisions the way that we have less errors involved. Originally developed by Motorola and used by Honeywell and General Electric and highly structured approach to process improvement. Um, and it's more like a strategy of decision making. Okay, so read the book on that topic. So you know that uh, Six Sigma cannot be accomplished without a major commitment from top level management uh, because they're the ones who are making decisions and they're the ones who will have to make decisions based on Six Sigma. Otherwise, it won't work. Quality circles, group of employees who meet regularly to solve problems, trained in, pl in planning, problem solving, statistical methods, often led by facilitator, very effective when done properly, benchmarking, determine what to benchmark, form a benchmark team, identify benchmarking partners. So that's what I told you, you have to have, have um, some successful, some top levels in production or in management or in quality uh, or productivity and compare to them. Collect and analyze benchmarking information, get the data, take action to match or exceed the benchmark. So by benchmarking, you will know where you stand in terms of um, quality, in terms of productivity, and you can decide how to improve and get get at that point or get better. Okay, so again, um, it's very important to um, um, take care of customer complaints. Um, customer complaints are there for us as data or feedback of your customers um, about your product and that's where you know how to improve your product. Okay, so make it easy for clients to complain. It's free it's a free market research, respond quickly to complaints, adds customer loyalty, um, customer satisfaction and loyalty are very important. Resolve complaints on the first contact, that reduces a lot of cost. Uh, use computers to manage complaints, discover trends, share them, align your services. Recruit the best for customer service job, because that's a very important, uh, that's actually the satisfaction and happiness of your customers, right? It should be part of formal training and career advancement. Internal benchmarking, as I said, benchmarking is not only against those competitors out there. It's also for internal, especially in large companies that have many managers, many employees. You can always find those top managers, top salespersons, top um, employees and try to see what's happening that what is it they're doing that they are very successful compared to those that are not and provide this information to your employees and put that in trainings to improve their um, productivity when the organization is large enough i just said that data more accessible can and should be established in a variety of areas Okay, so just in time, we did talk a lot about just in time. We told you that um, it's normally used when you have less space um, and you want to make sure that um, it's, a, it's a system that uses uh, demand comes first. It's, it comes from the other side of the production. Demand comes first and then you start producing and 
requesting for the supply. Um, so really quick go over this. A good example would be a car manufacturer that operates with very low inventory levels, um, relying on its supply chain to deliver its parts. It needs to build the cars, for example. Just-in-time inventory control has several advantages over traditional models. Production runs remain short, which means manufacturers can move from one type of production to another uh, very easily. This method reduces cost by eliminating warehousing uh, storage needs. Companies also spend less money on raw material because they buy just enough to make uh, the product uh, and no more. Uh, the disadvantages of just-in-time inventories involve disruption in the supply chain. Uh, of course, if anything goes wrong in the supply chain, then you have a big problem, right, in production. So it's a pool system of production scheduling, including supply management, and I told you what pool system is, right? The demand comes first. You don't use the predictions uh, to produce, you use actual demands and allow reduced inventory levels, um, encourages improved process and productivity quality. Relationship to quality, just JIT or just in time uh, cuts the cost of quality. JIT improve, improves quality. Better quality means less inventory and better, easier to employ JIT system. Uh, Taguchi's concept, um, engineering and experimental design method to improve product and process design, uh, quality robustness, target-oriented quality, quality loss function. What is quality robustness? Um, ability to produce products uniformly in an adverse manufacturing and environmental condition. So in a very simple way for those who don't Still, still, it's not very um, understandable for them. You want to keep the quality in a certain level. You don't want too much up and downs, right? You want it to be stable. Quality and productivity be stable. Quality loss function um, shows that cost increases as a product moves away from what the customer wants. Uh, or in fact, it's a target-oriented quality. Costs include customer dissatisfaction, warranty, and service. Internal scrap, um, repair, cost of society. And that's what we talked about earlier. Traditional conformance specifications are... Okay, next is the topic of um, total quality management tools. Tools for generating ideas, like check sheet, scatter diagram, cause and effect diagram, and Pareto chart and flow charts. Um, so, check sheet, we can always have a list of things to be done or things that are required uh, for, for checking to make sure these steps are completed or these um, uh, factors have met or also uh, these qualities have met, right? And we keep checking. We keep controlling and checking and making sure that um, what we what we want is there. Scatter diagram um, normally shows relation association between factors and uh, tell us that relation is there or not. Cause and effect diagram. So cause and, cause and effect diagram is very good, especially in production lines, where uh, you know if a failure happens somewhere. By looking at that map, looking at that diagram, it can tell you where the problem probably is coming from. If there are two reasons, you can check those two. If there is one, you can check that one. And you won't get confused and it won't take a long time for you to find where the error or problem is coming from. To sort of organize the data, pattern chart. Um, so it's part of chart is, is like a bar chart, but you actually put it in order from low to high or high to low. And also what it does is 
um, is add up, um, is a cumulative kind of chart. So other than having bars uh, sorted, you also have a linear chart, line chart on top that shows how changes in certain factor uh, happens cumulatively. And uh, the flow chart, so flow chart shows the, the whole process uh, of your whole supply chain or your whole production process. And with that, actually, it helps you in simulation, it helps you in understanding if you want to make any change to have a higher productivity, how you can make that change work. So let's go through a few of these. So that's it, like a check sheet. Organized method of recording data. Of course, these days these are less used, and uh, automation has actually changed a lot of things these days. Um, and we have these check sheets available on computer, and normally by some sensors, you get the information that you need. Scatter plots like relation between productivity and absenteeism. So the more absenteeism you have, the lower productivity, um, and it can help you to improve productivity, right? Cause and effect diagram, for example, a certain process, if there's a certain failure here, then you won't go into material, manpower, and machinery. You will look for things going wrong in the methods. Another one is Pareto chart that I told you is a chart that you put your uh, histogram or your mm, charts in order and on the other side you have a um, line plot that your line plot cumulatively uh, shows how by changing categories or changing these ranges is going to um, change. For example, frequency, percentages, dollar cost sales and so on. Another one is flowchart or process diagram. It's a chart that describes uh, steps in the process and helps you in decision making or management. And always you can change it. You can add um, steps to it to increase productivity and in finding issues in the process. Histogram I think is the most known to you is a distribution showing the frequency of occurrence of a variable and um, if it looks like a normal distribution that's perfect for decision making as i told you before so repair time and the frequency of um, it happening right so that can be an example and the other one statistical process control chart or simply control charts is a chart with the time on the horizon axis to plot values of statistics so this can be like sales this can be like um, defects this can be number of customers number of products um, in an inventory so you don't want lower than a certain amount you don't want higher than a certain amount so you put the system under a certain control. So this control system comes when you have a high, you have a process that has a lot of variation. So managers don't like variation, right? So what we want is to make sure that that variation is controlled. And our decision based on that variation is given and is um, made based on a control system. Why do we need a control system? As we said before, we want to make sure everything is close to the average or the target value that we have. So target value. We don't want things happening away from that target, right? If things go too far, that means the system is out of control. We, we try to keep the system in control, meaning that the variation should not go higher than or lower than a certain amount, right? So. We will talk about this a lot in the next sections and cause and effect diagram another example of it for this case is 
you can see missed free throws so this is for a um, game right shooter size of ball training conditions rim size yeah, bent knees and missed free throws uh, maybe basketball I don't know uh, but well you can actually analyze and see um, where missing free throws are coming from which which um, criteria is actually causing them and you can do that by collecting a lot of data and um, making sure that you improve and reduce the number of uh, free throws missed another parent chart example here and example of a flow chart this is for MRI flow chart so physician schedules MRI patient taken to the MRI patient signs in sign the papers and be prepared technician carries out MRI technician inspect the film if unnecessary in if unsatisfactory they will repeat it so that's the repeat part that's just number seven so you can see that based on the data 80 percent are successful 20 percent they have to redo it patient taken back to room mri um, read by the radiologist and mri report transferred to physician patient and physician discussed and from there depends on what the decision of the doctor is uh, and the patient they will make other decisions okay statistical process control um, uses statistics and control charts to tell when to take corrective action uh, drives process improvement four key steps are measure the process in fact you're collecting data when a change is indicated find the assignable cause you you can use a cause and effect chart here eliminate or incorporate the cause restart or revise the process so that's a control chart for basketball uh, game numbers making sure that number of uh, so this this should be the coach target value they don't want your they don't want our, our team member um, misses uh, too many throws right maximum 40 percent is set minimum zero so if it's more than 40 percent they will look for the cost is, is this person having any any issues mental issue um, the body their health um, nutritions what is happening we can find out inspection involves examining item to see if an item is good or defective detect a defective product and issues when to inspect where in process to inspect so when and where to inspect um, at the suppliers plant while the supplier is producing um, that's a good, good place to do because um, you stop an error or failure happening at the very starting point at your facility upon receipt of goods from your supplier that's quite late but still better than letting the item or, or production goes in um, and causes other other defects before costly or um, irreversible processes during the step-by-step -step production process when production or service is complete before delivery to your customer and at the point of customer contact so I would say the first three are the best um, and the rest are, are just very risky inspection has many problems uh, worker fatigue measurement errors are involved process reliability um, there's a high variation um, for inspection cannot inspect quality into a product uh, it's a robust design empowered employees and sound processes are better solutions compared to inspection 
So um, Pokoyok is the concept of foolproof devices or techniques designed to pass on the acceptable products. Uh, checklists ensure consistency and completeness. Okay, so these are examples that I want you to um, read from the book as your assignments, um, reading assignment from the book. Attribute versus variables. So what are attributes and what how they are differentiated in this book. Um, so attributes are items, are either, either uh, good or bad, acceptable or unacceptable, does not address the degree of failure. So if put you in two categories, right? Um, you have the, the production, the decision falls into only one group, not combination or not something in between, but variables Measures dimensions such as weight, speed, height, strength, it's like continuous and categorical, right? Continuous and group, um, and it falls within an acceptable range. Use different statistical techniques. So service quality is more difficult to measure than the quality of goods, um, and that's because you all have experienced service quality, right? You go to a restaurant. The feeling that you have in the, in the restaurant, um, it's not easy to measure. Of course, they can give you a survey and ask you rate it from 1 to 10, 1 to 5, 1 to 7. But still, um, you have read those survey questions. Sometimes you feel like something is not there for you to say what you actually want, wanted to say. You have to choose uh, what they gave you. So. That is where lack of uh, information, lack of uh, measurement is available. Okay, so, so when it comes to service, there's a lot of uh, difficulties in measuring. Uh, service quality perceptions depend on intangible differences between products and intangible expectations customers have uh, of those products. So sometimes you as a manager, you as a producer, you feel that my production is perfect um, or my service is perfect but where your customer comes from and what they expect can be completely different sometimes they have lower expectation they see your product or your service and they're super happy but at the same time you might have a customer who comes from the background or comes from a experience in a better better service better productions that their level of expectation is much higher than what you provide and they feel unhappy. That's why it's not easy. Service quality perceptions actually depend a lot on things that are not easy to measure. The operations manager must recognize the tangible components of a service. Service process is important. Service is judged against the customer's expectations, not the manager or producers um, or service providers. Exceptions will always occur. So we're not saying um, every customer 100% should be happy. Failures will happen. And the question is, after the failure happens, then what plans do you have to take care of the complex, right? 